There is actually no need for a morally good protagonist. Furthermore, there is no need for a likable protagonist. Most people will be quick to disagree with me, and I can see where they're coming from. For one, good protagonists are an effective way to ease the audience into the story. The readers or viewers will have no difficulty bonding with the character. Likewise, because they won't have any difficulty bonding to that character, it will be easier to engage them with the story, the plot, the risks, or the journey. Despite that truth, I'm always frustrated when people treat the idea of a protagonist being good or likable as the rule. The reality is that good protagonists, while more common in popular media, are not absolutely necessary. Let me explain what I'm talking about. When writing a story, the goal of the writer should be to both engage and entertain the audience. There are many ways the audience can be engaged, but since it's the audience that has to be engaged, the writer's goal is to somehow get the audience to invest in the story. Mystery authors do this by introducing a puzzle. The writer spends a good chunk of time weaving a plot. This can be a murder or a robbery of something valuable. When the reader finishes the first chapter, or so, they should be hooked on the mystery. Thriller stories with spies achieve this investment from the audience by getting them to first care about a protagonist. Whatever it is, most of the first chapter is spent preaching to the audience what a gentle-hearted, kind, loving individual this character is, and that's why they should care about the arbitrary object the protagonist will end up chasing around inevitably. All of these things I'm mentioning aren't the rule, however, they are certainly common. Fantasy authors, for instance, achieve investment from the audience by promising a journey. This is why most fantasy stories have prophecies. It's just a method fantasy authors use to tell the audience trust me shit is going to go down 50 chapters in so please give me some time to world build and establish common ground all in all the writer's job is to get the audience to invest in the story somehow they can do this in a cliched way or in a revolutionary way it does not matter how they achieve it ultimately the goal is to get the audience raving for more this is where my frustration comes to light i often hear people claim that protagonist being good or likable is absolutely necessary. The truth, however, is that the protagonist just needs to lead the story. They don't have to be good or, this is important, they don't have to be good or bad. They just have to move the story forward. That's literally what the word protagonist means. The leading character or one of the major characters in a play, film, or novel. If you search for synonyms for the word protagonist, you will find words like prime mover. You see, all the protagonist has to do for the story are two things. First, move the story along. And second, this one's also important, get the audience to invest in the story so they don't turn away. Let's talk about the anti-hero protagonist. The anti-hero protagonist is someone that achieves both of the aforementioned traits. First, they move the story along. That much is obvious because if they're not doing that, they are not the protagonist. Second, and more importantly, they get the audience to invest in the story. You see, the anti-hero protagonist is not entirely evil nor entirely good. They are not a Hitler or an angel. This means they're somewhere between being an angel or a tyrannical monster. As a result, there is plenty of window for the anti-hero protagonist to be redeemed. When the audience read the first chapter of the story or watch the first 10 to 20 minutes, the writer should take advantage of this particular trait of the anti-hero. In other words, they have to get the audience hooked on the anti-hero's redemption arc immediately. If the writer plays his or her cards properly, the audience should be invested in the story, i.e. the protagonist's redemption arc, before the end of the first quarter, which is around a quarter into the story. Another way is to use the moral downcomes of the anti-hero protagonist as an endearing quality. Deadpool, for instance, has stayed relatively the same ever since his first appearance in the 98th issue of New Mutants 1991. Yes, of course, he has had some character arcs in his many years. However, I think most of us can agree he has stayed relatively the same. Any change that occurred with his character was quickly reversed in the following issues. What's more interesting is that despite being an anti-hero, his fans love him for who he is. Deadpool fans love Deadpool despite his moral oopsies. They find it endearing and I would be lying if I also didn't find it endearing and Charming. Then there is the irredeemable monster. Where is money? A character so vile that they should be put in prison right away instead of being rewarded with a good character arc. However, despite being a monster, such a character can still be engaging and lead the story forward. In other words, monsters are protagonists. If they engage and lead the story forward, then they need not be ruled out. Take Jorg Ankrat from the Broken Empire series. He's one of my favorite protagonists in all of fantasy despite being a cunt. Throughout the books he goes through trials and often does all he can to make the best out of his misfortunes. Which is a euphemism for saying he manipulates, schemes and butchers his way to being an emperor. And still here I am, fond of the character and putting him alongside some of the greatest protagonists in all of fantasy. Jamie Lannister was always one of the most hated characters in A Song of Ice and Fire. But as the books progressed and the reasons for his pre 
previous cruelties were revealed to us readers, opinion started to shift about Jamie. As it stands today, I hold Jamie Lannister as George R. R. Martin's greatest character. Granted, he is not a protagonist, but at the same time, there is no single protagonist in A Song of Ice and Fire. Jamie Lannister is one of the many BOV characters and is as much of a protagonist as his brother Tyrion. Truth is that audiences are far more complicated than most writers are willing to admit. They are smart and can tell what a writer is aiming for with a character from the get-go. This is why a character as devilish as Jamie Lannister is constantly the highlight of the books as well as the TV show. Deadpool from Marvel, Jorg Ankras from The Broken Empire, Bateman from American Psycho and Dexter are all bad people who are great protagonists. Truth stands that a story does not need a good protagonist to keep its audience engaged. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends if you enjoyed it uh, if you have made it so far uh, thank you very much uh, i'm trying my best to grow my channel but you know people like you give me hope so thank you so much